Our reading for the sermon today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of the faith we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. Maybe you're not so scared or turned off by that, because after all, you're here watching a worship service, but have you ever had somebody come to your door and speak those words? Hi, I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. Maybe it's not so scary here in the midst of a sermon, but what if I were to say to you, I'd like to talk to you today about evangelism. A little bit more scared? Some of you here are, yeah? Evangelism is this word that carries quite a bit of baggage in our society, in our American culture in particular. When you think about evangelism, what are the things that come to mind? Is it people coming around door to door, knocking in your house and wanting to tell you about Jesus? Is it people standing on the street corners holding up big signs? Unfortunately, this is something that comes to my mind as well. And evangelism has some beautiful pieces that we need to continue to have as part of our faith. But there's also 
kind of a, a turned bad side to evangelism, what I might call aggressive evangelism. I remember when I was in college, uh, I had a friend who was partaking in this uh, campus Bible study and was invited to go to a conference in Portland, Oregon, uh, to spend the weekend with others who were a part of this ministry from around the country, and uh, invited me to come with them. So we decided to go. We, we made the trek to Portland, and um, it began, it began kind of innocently enough. We worshiped together. There was great worship and music. But over the course of a few days, there was things that I noticed in some of the sermons, some of the messages that sounded different than what I had been used to hearing. And by the last day, we were told that these hundreds of college students would be broken up into some different groups, and each assigned a portion of the city of Portland to go knock on doors. And we were going to be equipped, no worries, we were going to be taking some booklets with us to hand to people that shared a message about making the decision right now, before it's too late, to be saved by Jesus. This sort of uh, what we could call fire insurance, right? Turn or burn was the message that we were going to be sent out to share. Well, I'm not sure how it went for everybody else, but I can tell you that the Portland Zoo was a lovely place to be on that Saturday afternoon. Yeah, my friend and I bailed ship, and we just decided to go to the zoo. <laughs> we were not interested in that sort of aggressive evangelism that just did not make sense to our confession of faith. And then later, I remember being part of a, a church that hung in prominence uh, this beautiful painting that included this quote from St. Francis of Assisi that you maybe have heard before. The quote reads, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. And I thought, yeah, that's my version of evangelism, right? That we can be a people who, who do good works, who, who help the world and serve in various ways, and only have to share this message about Jesus if it's really necessary. And I can tell you that I found plenty of other things to do before that became the necessary thing <laughs> to do. <laughs> but if we listen to our reading today from Romans, it's hard to see that that is the right fit either. Paul writes, but how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. We're in the midst of this sermon series called Broken. Good news in difficult times. And we, of course, are living with some difficult times in our lives right now, right? And I think most, uh, most uncertain times, these difficult times, come with this sense of uncertainty and doubt. And we're left wondering and searching what is it that we can trust? What is it that we can put our sense of safety and security in? And our job as Christians is to share the great news of the one who is trustworthy, the one who welcomes our doubts and our questions, to share this good news of Jesus, the one who offers certainty and hope. I just love this gospel reading that uh, Christina and Deacon Lydia did a great job of illustrating in our children's message of these two blind men who cannot see, and they come to Jesus, and they believe in him. And Jesus does, in fact, heal them. After all, Jesus is this wonderful healer and grants them sight. And these two blind men who were not able to see go and tell everyone that they can find about the good news of this Jesus who has healed them. 
they are not afraid to share with others a word about the one who has completely transformed their lives. And we know this to be true as well. Maybe the strategy of door knocking and standing on street corners has not been effective evangelism for you as it hasn't been for me. But I also know and can think of people who have profoundly shaped my life of faith because they were indeed willing to share a message about Jesus, about God's love with me. And so I want you to bring to mind in your life, who are those people, those other family members or friends who have spoken to you a word about Jesus or about God's love, a word of how faith has infected their life, and how that has shaped you. In fact, I want you, if you're watching this at home, to take out your phone right now, even if you're here, you can take out your phone, and I want you to, in the comments of this worship thread, even if you're watching this later, to write down a few of those names. Go ahead. Pull them all, pull them all out. Write down those names. A parent, a grandparent, a friend, perhaps it was a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or a confirmation guide, who have been those people who have shared with you their faith and in doing so has shaped your life of faith? I am willing to bet that in most cases, those are people who didn't separate so harshly this difference between aggressive evangelism and, and passive evangelism, those people who, who didn't just come to you with a, a word about Jesus, but also people that came and cared and loved you. These are people who, yes, shared a message with you, but also shared it with the ways that they showed up in your life, and brought healing and care to you? I'm guessing that those two things are probably not pulled apart so separately in your life. And in fact, that's the kind of evangelical strategy that Jesus in himself did. When he called those early disciples, he showed up in the midst of their lives, and his word to them was, come and see to come and be a part of this life-giving work of Jesus in the world. Jesus didn't show up immediately sharing a word that, that they ought to believe in him or else, but invited them in to this life and relationship with himself. Evangelism is not this separation between doing and speaking. But in fact, these are two sides of the same coin. How our actions and our speaking are both needed. And the thing that really separates our different evangelism strategies comes down to motive. Why? Why would somebody share a word about Jesus? Is it so that you might be saved? That I somehow can save you because I've got the words that you need? Or do we share this word about Jesus because we want to share this life-giving love that we ourselves have already experienced? To share our own stories about how the love of God has been manifest in our own lives and how that has continued to shape the ways that we live and react to this world. This evangelism is a totally new way of seeing ourselves as Paul urges us that this is about how our interior and exterior selves become our truly authentic selves and brings to us this new geometry of what it means to be a part of this Christian faith, that it's no longer defined by the limits of who's in and who's out, by what we believe or say or do, but what extends this loving, radiating circle of Jesus is Jesus himself at the center. 
It's no longer defined by the, the limits, but by the center of the Jesus who calls and claims us, of a God who loves and redeems us, of a God who knows no bounds, whose generosity exudes into this world. And we, too, are to be that same generous presence in this world. So I also want you now to bring to mind who is it that needs you to bring them the good news? Maybe this is a harder question for you to consider. And this one you don't have to write on Facebook or YouTube. You know who this person is. And bring this person to mind. It's probably somebody that you're already caring for and supporting and loving. A person who already has seen by your actions the way that you are motivated by love. And perhaps there's somebody who needs to hear for the first time or for the hundredth time how God continues to show up in this world, in your life, and who promises to show up also in their life. And you don't have to do this out of an act of, of coercion or a way to save them, but as an act of love to share, just as these blind men shared this good news of God that has showed up in their life, a way to share also the message of how God has indeed loved and redeemed and called and claimed you. You can just send a text or maybe give them a phone call, maybe invite them, as Jesus would, out for dinner, or maybe invite them to worship. I mean, has this ever been easier to invite somebody to worship? All you have to do is click share. And as you do that, Trust in this promise that we find in Paul's writing today from Romans 10, that the word is near, on your lips and in your hearts. The word is near. As the Gospel of John tells us at the very beginning, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. This word that we are given, this word that we are sent to share with others, is the person of Jesus. The one who blesses the outcast. Jesus, the one who has healed the wounded. Jesus, the one who binds up the brokenhearted. Jesus, the one who lifts us up when we are broken. Jesus, the one whose love knows no bounds. This is the word, this person of Jesus, and this is a word I think we could all hear a little bit more of. Amen? So my prayer for you today comes in the form of a song. This is a song sung today by Billy Steele. Billy Steele is a uh, member of the renowned Minneapolis-based Steel family, a wonderful, talented group of musicians, and is someone that I got to know during my time on internship. And I think this song says it all. What evangelism is all about, indeed what our faith is all about, is one word. And that word that we are blessed to know ourselves, the word that we are sent to proclaim, is a sweet, sweet word. Jesus. Whisper his name, 
Whisper his name. Whisper his name. And he will answer you. Whisper his name. Whisper his name. Whisper his name. And he will answer you. Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. And he will come to you. Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. Call out his name. I need 